Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, Fiona. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And yourself? I'm really well. And thank you for staying up all the way in Australia to come and chat with me on the Share Your Story podcast. I'm, I'm really glad you made the time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you are only my, I'm just trying to think, either second or third guest, Australian guest. Um, I've not had that many, maybe because of the time difference, I guess. Um, but um, I've, I've been there many years ago, just the once on the Gold Coast um, for okay. a, a Tony Robbins event. Um, and yeah, that was the only time. It was only like a very short time, like a week, uh, far too short. And then I went to New Zealand for like... 10 days as well but um yeah it's it's a, just a it's literally for me when i went there it was like walking on a different planet mm. it was so literally different. the other side of the world and it's like a whole different place it's it's a totally different place not just the weather and the but the whole the culture even the cars look different you know what <laughs> It's so weird, you know. I really <laughs> felt like I was on, I'd landed because you have to travel for so long and I'd landed in a totally different planet. Anyway, it's not <laughs> about me. This podcast is about you. <laughs> so I'll ask the first question I ask all my guests, and that is please tell the listeners a bit about you. Uh, where were you born? Have you moved around? A bit about your education. Um, you know, your career, whatever you want to share, and then how you got into your own business. And we'll talk about your business and what you're doing in that as well. So I'm just going to listen and sit here and listen to you, Fiona. So over to you. Lovely. All right. So I am actually a very true outback Australian. I grew up in a little town called Broken Hill, which is in very far western New South Wales. So if you think about the map of Australia, it's not quite in the middle, but getting getting pretty close to it. So wow. lots of red dirt, kangaroos. Um, there, was, there was always brown snakes in our backyard when I was a kid in the summertime. Um, <laughs> you know, our, our fun Ooh. was, um, you know, ch chasing sleepy lizards and, and um, you know, the, the boys at school would always bring them in for show and tell and try to scare the girls with the, with the lizards. It was always quite amusing. So that there was, you know, the fun <laughs> of growing up somewhere that um, was, was very out there. In fact, it's, it's quite, a, quite a famous town for um, movies. If um, any of your listeners have ever watched Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, that was literally filmed when I think I was in maybe my last year of high school. Right. So, yeah, lots, lots of <laughs> red dirt and, you know, I, I'm old enough to remember times before the internet, so very yes. remote. Our closest capital city was Adelaide at about five and a half hours drive away. So, whoa, yeah, very remote. <laughs> and, and are you afraid of snakes? Look, they don't bother me. Look, I'd prefer for them to go and do their own business wherever they're going to go and um, I'll do do my business somewhere else. But, yes. you know, we all share the same space. I was um, I was bushwalking in the National Park the other day doing some exercise and um, my my personal trainer said, well, look, there's a snake over there. And I'm like, okay, yeah, as long as he's in the bushes, we're good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, I, I think they're beautiful creatures, but I'd, I if I see one, well, I I have seen one a long time ago, and it, yeah, I'd rather have them behind kind of glass. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with them all over here is most of them are going to kill you. So <laughs> yeah, that's it. They're, they're, they're oh, certainly God, not your friendly yeah. kind. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Okay, wow. So, okay. So Go growing ahead. up out, out in the outback, um, you know, added bonus to that, I guess, was, um, you know, I had a pretty pretty much normal childhood up until um, sort of maybe I hit high school and then sort of, I guess, things 
became a little more complicated in the sense that I think, you know, all of us get to that teenage years and we start to question our identity a little bit and kind of try to work out what it is that we want to do and where we want to be. Yeah. And added to that, um, I've been legally blind since I was born. And so it just threw that extra little, you know, thing into the mix a little bit to kind of go, oh, okay, well, you know, there's extra considerations. Yeah. And look, I think, you know, I think my, my, um, cousins and big sister were tasked with looking after me um, extra well when I was right. sort of in my, my younger years. But of course, by the time I'm a teenager, I'm wanting to go and do stuff with my friends and hang out and be a little bit more independent. And yes. I do remember a story first night that we went out with my um, my friends. We thought we were so cool. We would have been about 13 or 14 at the time and we decided we we're going to go to the movies. So we went to the the evening movie and we're going to get picked up by somebody's parents. And so we had to cross the main road to, to go to the meeting spot. And there's only one main street in this town and only one set of traffic lights. Mm. And do you think that the, the you know, teenagers thought we, it was a good idea to cross, cross at the traffic lights? Nah, no, no, no. no. Oh, that would be way too easy. My friends yeah. are like, come on, let's just run across the road. And I'm mm. like, Okay, look, come on, there's, there's not that much traffic in this town. <laughs> it's, but you guarantee that, yes, there was, oh, look, there's a car coming. We, we need to run rather than just take it casually. Yeah. So someone grabbed my arm and off we run, except they forgot to tell me that there was a median strip in the middle of the road. <gasps> so now I'm laying on the middle of the ground on, on the road and the friends have run to the footpath on the other side and then one of them, and kindly came to come and pick me up, I guess. Yeah. And I was mortified. I thought, oh, my goodness me. Like, this is horrific. The whole town has just seen me fall on my face in the middle of the main street. And, in fact, you know, it was something that I probably internalised more than anybody else yeah. and you know, no one really cared. But for me it was like this point of, wow, can I actually do the things that I want to do in life because all of a sudden yeah. it's it's a bit of a different perspective. and. It took me a few years to get myself sorted out. And, like, you know, I probably had some level of depression even as a teenager, I guess. Um, you know, there was a few other bits and pieces that went on. There was some schoolyard bullying and my dad passed yeah. away when I was 15. And so there was lots of, lots of bits and pieces all contributed to each other. Mm. And I got to a point where I went to, um, to visit a teacher one day and I, I had to give a presentation and I said, I need to know about suicide. And he just kind of looked at me and went, do you want to know for yourself or to help other people? And I kind of pondered mm. it for a moment. I went, yeah. oh, actually, I want to help other people. And that was the moment that I realised that I actually did want to help other people and I could utilise my story and my experiences to help other people that were, you know, dealing with significant challenges in life. So, and what age were you again? It's probably about 16 then. At 16? I, yeah. I got yeah, that so realisation. <laughs> <laughs> pretty that pretty is, huge yeah that's insane <laughs> i mean to get a calling at 16 yeah that's ridiculous right. and and you know it was it was a great opportunity i'd actually been um not so long before on a uh, a blind camp for um other teenagers and we did all these mm. recreational activities you know things that that you know really push you outside of your comfort zone things that other teenagers that were fully abled were doing i mean we were abseiling and water skiing and horse riding and you know everything that you could you could think of yeah and i i could see that these kids that um you know, a lot of them had better coping strategies and skills than what I did. And I was a real, I guess, bonus to be able to see other kids that were managing better because, of course, growing up where I did, I had never experienced anybody else with the same disability. And so no. it was it was a real opportunity to sort of realise, okay, well, this doesn't have to stop you. In fact, we just make it work for you and think outside the square. And so, yeah, that was, I, w- I went back from, um you know, the, the camp and really knuckled down at high school and, and off to university I went. And I think I had a plan for every letter of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, to make sure that I got out of my country town and yeah. I ended up moving to Sydney. So a week after my 18th birthday, I caught the train to Sydney with my suitcase and a couple of boxes of stuff and set myself yeah. up in a little apartment and put myself through university and, um, 
yeah, that was that was the beginning of um, you know social work degree, and I guess a good ten years of living in Sydney. Wow. So yeah, and I got into um, it was it was by accident more than anything else. I was attending uni quite a far away from where I was living at the time. My my ex husband. Yeah. And I decided that we we're going to move in together. And I thought, okay, well, that's okay. I can travel to uni. But when it came to doing my um, my practical hours, I thought I don't want to travel all the way to the other side of Sydney to do my practical hours every day as well. Mm. And yeah. so I just kind of picked a um, a place off of the list that had a, a location that was much closer to to where I was living, where I could I could do my hours. And yes. it turned out that it was a HIV clinic, and. I loved it so much that I stayed as a volunteer the rest of the time I was at university. After oh, uni, wow. I worked um, in a call centre for about six months and then got my, myself a job back at the, um, the HIV clinic and worked there for nearly 10 years and absolutely loved it. Gosh. It was, it was a bit of an eye-opener. Um, I can imagine, you know, yeah. Um, and answering uh, people's questions. I was er- initially working on the HIV information line. And so people would ring up and say, this is what I've been up to. Do you think I should go and get a test? And it'd be like, okay, well, yeah, your risk is this or that. And so yeah. I-, I can tell you, I got, a- I got a pretty good life education at 18 or 19 when I was doing that. Gosh. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that to get an insight into those kind of things, it, it, it allows you to really see, you know, human suffering mm. uh, firsthand. Um, and, and, you know, once it? again, to, to really use those skills in being non-judgmental, like it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, what your situation is. If you're unwell and you need a helping hand, then, you know, you need that, that helping hand regardless of whatever your circumstances are. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Oh, that's incredible. And what, I mean, you said you did a social work degree. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, what made you decide to do that? So it, it really came into that helping people thing. It was all about, right. um, you know, I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to, to help other people in, in ways that, you know, I thought, okay, well, if, if I've had problems and I've been able to overcome them, Surely there's other people out there that, that need a helping hand as well. And if I've got the skill to be able to stay calm and, and rational and be able to sort of, you know, look at somebody else's circumstances and, and help them work through whatever's going on for them, then, you know, yeah. that's a skill that I should be sharing with other people. Incredible. And just, Fiona, for our listeners, could you, you mentioned you were legally blind at birth. Mm-hmm. Could you just kind of reference for them what what that means for you um i mean do you have any kind of sight at all or none or what's your situation yeah look it it, as as a child it wasn't so bad it has degenerated over the years so um as as a child my my retina doesn't work basically is the short short um answer to what the problem is and yeah. so you've got kind of two sets of cells on your retinas and the first one is like your stuff that helps you with night um not time dark areas uh, differentiating colours, um, you know, to be able to see the gradients, to walk downstairs, all of that kind of thing. So they were always pretty short. And then your um, your cone cells are the things that help you to be able to see, to do, you know, daily activities like reading and, um, you know, that, that general sight kind of stuff. And yeah. they're the ones that have slowly continued to die off. So these days... Look, I reckon I've probably got about 10% vision left. Um, what, right. You know, they, they don't bother to test it anymore. They're just kind of like, well, we can't fix it. And really you're too no. blind to read the charts. So we'll just, <laughs> we'll just assume now. So yeah. um, the, the, the short answer is, is I generally tell people just assume the worst and we'll work backwards. So yes. um, really bright areas, I can see things like if I go outside on a really sh- like sunshiny day, then, yeah. um, you know, I can probably see more than, you know, in a dark room, for example. Got you. Okay. Thank you for that. It just just puts a little bit of context mm. around, you know, there you are helping other people who have issues in life. Um, 
But at the same time, you've got major issues in yours too. Um, I think we've all got major issues though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hit the nail on the Some head Some of them there, are yeah. just more obvious than others. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. some are physical, aren't they? <laughs> and some are not. <laughs> <laughs> or a lot of them are not. <laughs> yeah, good point. Very good point. Okay, so there you are social work degree because you want to help people which all stems from that conversation with your teacher and then um you got a job and you work for 10 years at the hiv clinic yep Um, yep so so what happened after that um look i had i had my babies at that time as well so i've got two beautiful daughters who are now 18 and 16 and oh, they, they live on your beautiful Gold Coast. So <laughs> you've, oh. you've seen, seen where they live. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have indeed. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, so so I decided that it was time for a bit of a change. And so I went and um, worked in car sales for a couple of years of all things and yeah. um, did that for a little bit. And, oh, look, you know, it was time for a big change after that. Went through a bit of a messy divorce and a few other bits and pieces. And I just went, you know what, time for total life change. And so that's when I moved from Sydney to Melbourne. And I've been living here for probably, I don't know, it's probably getting close to 15 years now. And, um, yeah, like that was, you know, once again, an opportunity to do something different. And I, when I first moved here, uh, it was it was a bit of a, an adjustment to kind of work out, okay, well, what do I want to do? And yeah. I went back into the social work. I think it's kind of one of those things that you do for a while and then you get a bit burnt out and you go and do something else and then you go back into it. So right. I ended up helping disabled people find a job for a few years and that that's um, that sort of tied me over for about five years. And yes. then I moved to, so it was burnout time again. So yeah. I moved to work in customer service for our government roads authority. And I'm still doing that just in a different capacity. So I was working on the, the, um, the customer service phone line, but I'm now working in a specialised department. And it links back into the disability stuff because I'm actually um, working on like the, the mobility parking pass passes and, right. um, you know, helping, helping people with their applications for those and yeah. also doing some, some disability advocacy stuff with the, the wider Victorian government as well. So plenty, plenty of stuff happening in that side. Yes. And then, I don't know, maybe in the last 12 to 18 months, I've also launched my own business. So yeah. life, life is never quiet in my my part of the woods. <laughs> Not dull at all. And what made you decide to launch your own business? Well, I think it went back into that helping people stuff. And I yeah. did a uh, life coaching course during the time when we were all in lockdown over here. Right. And I, because I was going a little bit crazy, I was like, you know, working from home and, and you know, I, I need to be busy and challenged. And I had the opportunity to do some extra study and I thought that would be a great mixer in between the social work degree, which is quite, you know, I guess a, a sort of regulated standard kind of thing. And yeah. I'd sort of dabbled in a lot of um, natural therapy stuff. So I've done some hypnotherapy and Reiki and a few other bits yeah. and pieces along the way. And I sort of thought, oh, the life coaching is the perfect thing to just blend all of that together. And yeah, um, yeah so that's that's what I did. I took the opportunity to um to to put all of that together and and do the coaching course. Well it's I mean it's it's quite a you know, okay, let me ask a different question. What What are you hoping to do with that, you know, becoming a well, life I think, coach? What? I think once again it's tapping into working out what's going on for people and getting them to realise that they don't have to be stuck and frustrated and going around on the same little, you know, like the little hamster on the wheel going round and round and not getting anywhere yes. in life. And I think... You know, there, there's always opportunities for change. And yeah. sometimes people just don't have the resources or the tools that they're aware of. They're there, but they just aren't aware of the fact that they've got them. 
And sometimes yeah. we get so bogged down in that every day, just, you know, routine, go here, do this, go there, do that. And mm. people don't take the time out to actually take care of themselves and actually to, to think about where, where do I want to be and actually what will make me happy. And so mm. it's sitting down with people and working that out. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. And do you think that are you wishing that hopefully your income from your own business will replace the income from the work that you do for the government? Look, essentially, I, I'm I'm in a really great position with my my everyday job, in the sense yes. that I have um, flexible hours because we're still all working from home over here in Melbourne, or we will be for the next few months at least. Yes. And so I can start early and finish early, and so it gives me flexibility. And look, I love what I'm doing for work, and I love the team that I'm working with. Yeah. And so yeah. ideally, yeah, it'd be great to do a little bit more of the um the coaching. And yeah. you know, maybe drop my hours back a little bit, but I really like having the best of both worlds in the sense that I know I've got a solid paycheck coming in, and um, you know that that gives me the security to be able yeah. to then investigate doing some other things, which is is really an ideal situation. I think I think you're right. You know, I mean, it, it this is this is the perfect interview for my podcast <laughs> and I'll, <laughs> I'll explain why it's when I set this up some years ago I wanted to interview people who had set up their own business and listen to their journey on how it all got started and one of the key things is how do you make the switch from being employed and having a job which people also use that as an anagram for just over broke. And then because you spend all your money that you earn and then st starting your own business because you're fed up of the corporate rat race. Now, obviously listening to you, it's very different for you because you're not looking, you're not really saying, I want to start my own business because I want to get out of this rubbish job that I've got. <laughs> um, it's different, but a lot of people are, mm. but the big mistake that I made and lots of other people make is there's an is a cutoff. You kind of go stop my job and start my new business. And where are the clients? <laughs> you know, mm. it's like I haven't got and any you're clients. You're stuck in limbo, kind of while you're waiting for that that client base to grow enough that you can substantiate your business on its own. And then That's you're kind right. of going, whoa, and 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 you know, it must be extremely stressful, and you know, that's one thing that I, I yes. sort of didn't want to add was additional stress in my life. Like I'm, 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 you know, I'm trying to do everything to create less stress and to help yes. other people be less stressed. And so mm. being really stressed myself about where my financial situation was going to sit or, you know, where that next client was going to come from and when the phone was going to ring to have another booking, you know, it wasn't, wasn't something that I really wanted to, to bring into my life. And and that is brilliant. Well done. Congratulations. It's it's excellent. And it will be that because isn't there on the on the life wheel, isn't there a segment around finance or wealth or whatever? There is. Yes. And you know, you're looking after that, aren't you? You're saying, Well, I'm basically you're eating your own excuse the the phrase, but it's a it's a good phrase to explain what you're doing is that you're eating your own dog food. Mm -hmm. um, because you're saying, yeah, that's a priority and I'm going to keep that segment of my life wheel, you know, in a good position. Yeah. Brilliant. And, you know, I, it's I not without it's... goals. Yeah. Like, I mean, one of mm. my goals, unfortunately, is that, well, fortunately, it gives, keeps me driven, is yes. that I have, I've set my mind on, um, we were we were renting a house on the other side of Melbourne in the inner east. Yes. And so I I don't know a comparison to be able to to give it to you locally. But I mean, you imagine like, you know, quite posh, close to the city kind of old school kind of money. And mm. I absolutely love the community feeling. 
it was just a really nice environment. I love the convenience where you could just jump on the tram and go into the city and everything's lovely. And I'm like, okay, I need to move back here. And so at the moment we're living in a house that it is enabling us to save our dollars. But at the same time, the end goal is to buy a house back in that other other area. Yes. And unfortunately, the, the minimum house price that we would be looking at is about $2 million. So, yeah. you know, it's it's one of those things that's like, well, unfortunately, the housing market is is pretty extreme here at the moment. And, mm. you know, if that's that's the end goal, then looking after my finances is something that I need to do. Yeah. Excellent. Well, that's that's a great goal to have and a you know, a great vision to have as well and hold on to because that that mm. drives you. You know, um, I'll just lift my T-shirt because you'll see the word. I don't know if it's mirrored on your side, but it says why. Um, yeah. You you have a, a, a great why uh, because Absolutely. that drives you to, you know, move in the direction that you want to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... So tell us a little bit then about, okay, you have a business. I've seen your website. You have a website. How are you finding clients for your new business? How How is it working? How is it going? Well, I'll be honest. It is a little bit of a struggle. It's like any startup. It's like where, where are the mm. people? And so, yeah. look, I'm very lucky in the sense that I do have this, this disability background. And so I can tap into, um, you know, the specific niche of people with disabilities and yes. um, especially relate that to things like job coaching and, um, you know, facilitate, you know, that, that life-changing idea of, of people who maybe didn't think that they could get a job because of their disability and, and okay, well, let's work around the mindset and then, yeah. um, you know, utilise some of the resources that are out there to actually make that happen. And so that's that's one of the things that I'm, I'm working with at the moment. Um, and, you know, just picking up clients from, from wherever I can, like, uh, you know, doing the social media thing and, and you know, offering. I'm, I'm running a 10-week course for an organisation at the moment um, and I'm just doing that as a, a volunteer thing. And, you know, like it, it's benefiting me too because, I got to to put my course together and structure it and do a you know 10 week group coaching session with some people and so yeah. they're they're kind of like my guinea pigs and so you oh, know it, it works you know both ways I guess and so yes. you know just working out those those things that I can do to sort of you know refine my own skills while I'm I'm sort of you know looking for those extra people and look they'll they'll come along as it as it happens you know, I don't, I don't necessarily want to be filled up with, you know, 40 clients a week. That would probably no. not be very ideal either. No. And so, you know, just to just sort of, you know, go, go at it as it, as it happens and, you know, let it build organically, I think is really important. And I guess is, is one of your strategies, because obviously you found this podcast, is it to go on podcasts as well? Mm, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the more the word gets out there, the more people get to know who I am and what I can offer. And, yes. you know, I think that that makes a big difference. And um, I've also been doing a lot of, um, you know, presentations for community groups, things like Rotary Club and stuff like that to sort of, you know, once again, to kind of get the word out there and say, hey, look, you know, and even just to, yes, you know, I think it's it's using some of those coaching ideas in essence, to just help people to, to think differently. I mean, we've all been in this, this really strange world situation over the last couple of years in terms of, you know, people dealing with a different lifestyle than what they've been used to. And, mm. you know, to, to be able to get people to think differently about the challenges that they're faced with in life and, you know, to realise that no matter what adversity you face, that there's always some kind of silver lining in that cloud. And even though it may be really difficult to see at the time, there's always something that you will get out of that situation. And, you know, it might be extra strength. It might be just knowledge not to not to do that same mistake again. But yeah. you will always get something out of every situation and learn to be, you know, resilient and to actually work through those situations that you are faced with. And, you know, instead of, 
I guess, you know, a lot of people have been sort of moaning and groaning a little bit about oh, how terrible things are and, well, we're in lockdown and I can't do anything and I'm, I'm missing mm. out on all the things that I want to be doing. Yeah. You know, to, to try and get people to to think a little differently and flip that and go, okay, well, you know, yes, there's things that you can't do, but let, let's focus on what you can do because right now let's work on yeah. the things that you can change, not the things that are out of your control. Yeah. No, that's that's great advice. And I mean, they have said, I don't know about you guys in Australia, but they've definitely been reporting on this in the UK that, you know, mental health, young and old, hmm. is going to be a major issue going forward as a result of this pandemic um, for many different reasons, you know, people being fearful of mm. going out again as well and you know people having been you know lonely because they're on their own and they can't get out um, mm -hmm. and people can't visit them so and then on top of that you've got young people too because they can't be with their friends and live the kind of you know active lifestyles that young people like to well, they deserve to have in their young mm. years, you know. Mm. So, yeah. So it's probably a, a good time to have the skills to, to help people with those issues. So well done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned earlier in the conversation that you had, you'd done some other holistic therapies, hypnotherapy, Reiki. Um, and so how are you... Are you incorporating that as part of your offer or how? how because it's difficult, isn't it? Because you've got if you've got a tool kit with many different options to help people, which one do you choose to say this is the most appropriate one? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, it's sometimes it's a little bit like, oh, wow, well, you know, I've got all these options. And sometimes yeah. it's great to have lots of options, but it's also working with the people and quite often they'll come to you and they'll have a bit of a concept about what's going on. And, you know, I guess as you find out a little bit more about them, then you also then have the ability to go, oh, okay, well, you know, have we thought about trying this or trying that? And, you know, for someone that's, that's really scientifically minded, you probably wouldn't suggest something like Reiki, for example. But for yeah. someone who seems to be a little bit more open and spiritual and, and into sort of more alternative therapies, then, you know, maybe that is something that you would mention and ask them, have they ever tried it? And then, you know, yeah. look, sometimes it's just a matter of putting it out there. And then, you know, if they seem interested and ask some more questions, then, you know, that may be a path that you follow. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. But people would tend to, um, you know, come to you and say, I'm calling you about this and then you yeah. can kind of then, then work it out. And look, you know, I mean, something like hypnotherapy, for example, I mean, you know, it, it comes into all sorts of different bits and pieces and there's, there's all different levels of hypnotherapy in the sense that, I mean, you know, we can, we can have you fully hypnotized. You can be, um, you know, jumping around like clucking like a chicken <laughs> Or, yes. you know, you can be, you can be using it to, um, you know, overcome addictions or, you know, your smoking yeah. habits or whatever, or yeah. you can use it as a, um, a tool. And that's the way that I generally use the hypnosis is more like a, uh, like a super deep meditation kind of tool. Yes. And so it gets yes. people to sort of tap into those unconscious thoughts, but in a, a sort of, you know, safe way, because it's not something that their brain can easily process quite often mm. because it's too scary or they've built too much anxiety around it or, you know, there's there's all of these reasons why, you know, they're not unpacking that particular event. But if we use the hypnotherapy, then, you know, it's nice a nice subtle way of doing it and they don't feel quite as overwhelmed and quite as confronted. Yeah, yeah. that That's an excellent way of dealing with it. I mean, um, I studied reiki many years ago i never i only went to reiki too but um the other day on um national television here in the uk they had a lunchtime show and for the first time i saw on tv they were actually talking about reiki 
Wow. Uh, and they had Reiki people there and they did a kind of Reiki meditation type thing. She didn't do any kind of energy healing as such, but mm. it was incredible to witness really to say, my God, I, I got exposed to this in 2004. Mm. Um, and here we are 17 years later. And, and it's, it's become finally mainstream. Yeah. Becoming think, mainstream. People know yeah. what it is, you know, or, yeah. or they may not know what it is, but they know what the word it means mm. perhaps, or mm. if they've heard mm. the word, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, interesting, actually. Um, you know, I did, oh gosh, I did my level one and two probably back in the late 90s. And yeah. um, my level, my master teacher level was actually done by a guy in Bristol. So, <laughs> quite... <laughs> Bristol, UK. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, incredible, incredible. Um, well, yeah, it's it's uh, it's something that's been around forever. It's something that everybody has the ability to tap into. But yeah, there we go. And look, I think people oh. do it without even realizing. Like, I mean, you know, how many times do you see parents like, you know, they've got their their child crying with a little boo boo, and they go, oh, you know, mummy or daddy, give it a kiss better. You know, that that's yeah. a way of energy healing. People just don't don't realize that they're doing it. I, you're 100% right. When I was, I think I must have been 19 or 20 or something, and my girlfriend at the time and I were babysitting her sister's baby, younger, first baby, and they'd gone out, and this baby was crying its head off in the cot, and my girlfriend did not know what to do. <laughs> and I said, I know what to do. Okay, I had no knowledge of Reiki, right? So I know what to do. <laughs> and I put I put my hand on her head, the little baby's head, and mm. just kept it there and didn't say anything. I never said a word. I didn't try and shush it or mm -hmm. give comforting noises. I just held my hand there. And literally within 10 seconds, she stopped. Wow. And I went, yeah. amazing. How did that yeah. work? <laughs> You know, <laughs> it was only years later I realized what I was doing. <laughs> so um, it's it's fascinating, fascinating. Right, Fiona, what else? What else are you up to? Is there anything else you would like to share with me? What else am I up to at the moment? Oh my gosh, my biggest thing is I'm I'm trying to um, I guess show people a bit of an insight into my life because I sort of constantly have people go oh oh wow you can you can do that and it's mm. like yeah that's just kind of normal for me like um even even yesterday I am um, because we've been in lockdown for so long I thought oh gosh I'm I'm not going to even bother to try and go to the hairdressers I'm just going to dye my hair myself because you know I'm I'm not not too afraid to mention that there's there's gray shining through <laughs> and um so oh, yeah I know the feeling off, off, <laughs> off we went to the chemist on the weekend and um you know pur purchased a box dye and yeah um you know do it do it yourself at home hair dye and i said to you know my workmates as i was finishing off work yesterday afternoon they're like oh you know i said what are you going to do and i said oh yeah today today today's you know hair dyeing day <laughs> Oh, well, what? <laughs> like, how do you do that? <laughs> and they don't even like. I mean, they couldn't even have a concept of trying to do it themselves, even with good eyesight. Let alone I trying know. to do it without being able to see what you're doing. And so, just little things like that that I think, oh, you know, I just do that without even thinking about it. But most people yeah. are just like wowed by it and going, "Whoa, whoa! How, how do you do that?" And yeah. so, um, yeah, that that's my thing at the moment is is trying and look trying to teach. Like it's like trying to teach an old dog new tricks when you're trying to learn Instagram. I'm like, Instagram wasn't wasn't my generation really. I'm no. I'm the Facebook generation, but not not Instagram. And so I'm just like, you know, it's it's really hard to be mindful of, oh, you know, what 
what what do I need to be doing here to make this work? And so yeah. I, um, I've been doing um, lots of lots of personal training and um, you know going for going for the walk in the national park and and um, my aim is to run up the hill at the national park by the end of the year. It's quite Brilliant. a steep hill, so at the moment I'm yeah. puffing and puffing <laughs> just by walking up and down it. Yes, but um, you know, just little bits and pieces like that that I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, remember to take a photo while you're doing this. And f- funny story, I'm doing um, uh, pole dancing fitness as as one of my you know crazy exercises. I figured, <laughs> okay, I, I wanted to I wanted to do dance class, and I thought, yeah, well, you know what, like hubby, hubby's not real keen on the whole dancing thing. And I thought, well, you know what? Like if I do pole dancing, then at least my partner can't run away from me. At least I know where they are all of the time. So yeah. <laughs> I figured <laughs> I figured let's do that. And I tell you what, my goodness, like it's hard work. Like, you know, it's it's not I as bet. easy as it, it's not as easy as it looks. Definitely so, but not. Some, the the support girl worker that took me to class this afternoon that drove me over there. She's only about 20. And I handed her my phone and I said, oh, yeah, take some photos so I can put them on Instagram later. She handed my phone back at the end of the, the session and I, <laughs> she's taken like a hundred and something photos. And I'm Whoa. like, yeah, see, you're the Instagram girl that <laughs> is in the right generation for this. Yeah. <laughs> I would have taken like four and gone, okay, yeah, that's one of right. those will work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh my god so so yeah that's that's uh, the antics at the moment is um you know and of course because we're just out of lockdown now it's like mm. oh, go and do all the things like I've, i literally made myself a list this afternoon of about oh, probably about 30 or 40 things that i want to go and do everything yeah. from doing I, I went skydiving when i was quite young and i'd like to go yeah. and experience that again so wow. um you know, I want to do that right through to, um, you know, just, uh, you know, weekends away and places to go and visit. And, um, you know, uh, there's a there's a couple of places that I've found that have got like the, the little zip line things and yes. all sorts of bits and pieces. So I'm, I'm, I'm planning lots of adventures over the next few months to, um, you know, go, go and explore the world again, which will be which will be lovely rather than being cooped up in our little our little zone of where we we're allowed to travel. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, one of those things does does include a trip to the Gold Coast in the new year to um, spend some some time in the sunshine and catch up with family. Oh, wonderful! That sounds amazing. Well, your kind of adventure mission, all these adventures, etc., is is incredible. For I mean, it would be difficult for most people to do who are have got normal eyesight let alone who've got limited eyesight and you know it does show you that if you put your mind to it which i guess is what you are all about not just being able to help people but you're kind of walking the talk Mm. um that if you put your mind to it you can achieve anything yeah and And you know what sometimes it's it's about following a slightly different path yeah like instead yeah. of going down the road that everybody else follows, you know, maybe maybe it's a bit of a swervy swervy side path, but um, yeah, you know, you get there and and you know, look, it's 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 just um, yeah, I think I think we all need to um, you know, certainly live in the moment and be grateful for what we've got, um, yes. as well as as setting goals and things for the future and and I don't know, just to um you know, push, push those boundaries of the comfort zone and try and try and learn and experience something new every day because, yeah. you know, we, we really don't know what's around the corner. And so, you know, there's, there's always the opportunity we experience new things rather than looking back with regrets. Yeah. And, you know, look, if you screwed up, then at least, you know, you gave it a good go. That's it. <laughs> I've had plenty of those on the way. <laughs> <laughs> There is no such thing as failure, is there? It's always learning. There's only Absolutely. learning. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. there's only and, learning. And, you know, if you're having fun along the journey, then, you know, that's all you need to worry about. And and look, in those moments that aren't fun, then you just go, okay, well, you know, this is this is giving me the contrast 
to when things are fun because everything was just boring and normal and, you know, down a straight line and we didn't have those ups and downs. If we didn't have the down parts, we would never really experience what those up parts really were. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, well said. Definitely. Okay, Fiona. So tell us where people can find you. Uh, your website on any social media you'd like to engage with people. I'll put it in the show notes as well. Lovely. So the easiest way to think about me, first of all, is so I'm Fiona Mark. So it's like Denmark without the N. Yeah. And so the website is Fiona.Dmark. No, try that again. Let's go back and we'll we'll <laughs> we'll fix that up. You can tell <laughs> you can tell it's getting late. <laughs> yes. So www.fionadmark.com.au, and yeah. the um, Instagram is Fiona.dmark Blind right. Inspiration, and I'm also on Facebook at Fiona Dmark as well, and LinkedIn Excellent. as well. I'm all over the place. But well, it's an unusual surname. It, it um, is indeed. You know what? Yeah. Before my husband and I married, yeah, my surname was Johnson. So ah. <laughs> you know, there was there was plenty of those. And look, even when I got married the first time, my surname was Williams. So this time, <laughs> I'm glad we've got something a little less generic. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a bit unusual. And do you know? Does he know where D Mark came from originally? Yeah, it's. Um, probably got its origins in northern France and it was probably like D, maybe apostrophe M-A-R-C to start off with, so right. Demarc, or maybe yeah. even just the D-E separated from the end part. Which but, is what um, my name is, mm. which is D-E separated from Groot. Mm. So, and, yeah. yeah, some of my forefathers, mothers, I've still got to research it. We're also connected to France somewhere. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So I think that, that's where it Interesting. originated. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, so yeah, literally every, everyone with the same surname is a relative, which is kind of cool. Wow. <laughs> that is very cool. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Fiona, lovely to speak with you. Thank you. Thank you for staying up so late as well. I really appreciate it. Um, if you ever come to the UK, let me know. <laughs> I certainly will. Um, that is one of the things on the on the list to do. Maybe not right. quite the, the immediate adventure list, but no. um, certainly I do have um, my, my heritage. Uh, my dad was actually born in Scotland. And ah. so at some point I would very much like to, to come over and, and um, you know, have a look around. I was I always grew up as a kid, like loving everything that was English. Remember, there was some oh. um, the 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 TV show, the Bill, the 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 cop yes. show. Yeah, that was yeah. that was obviously you know <laughs> my my generation, and I used yes. to you know avidly because we only got our, our two television channels out in the the little town that I grew up in and so right. you know that was our our BBC equivalent they used to you know play it on the what we call the ABC and yes. so every saturday night I'd be I'd be watching the bill and and thinking <gasps> I love those cool accents and everything's so cool. And one day I'm going to go <laughs> over there and <laughs> not, not oh, happened yet, God. but you know, one day it will. I'm sure it will. Yeah. Well, if you do, do let me know and maybe we can catch up somehow. I will uh, certainly look you up. Oh, bless you. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Take care. No worries at all. Thank you. You have a Bye lovely day. Now. Yeah, you you have a lovely night. (laughs) (laughs) If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests. So do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.